Hi everyone, this is Felicia Brown with One Concept Radio, where I'm getting to know experts and educators from the massage, chiropractic, acupuncture, and spa professions. Today, I'm honored to be here with Tina Allen. Tina Allen is founder of the Little Kids Foundation and is an internationally respected lecturer, author, and authority on infant and pediatric massage therapy. She has received numerous honors for her work around the globe, including being named by the Massage Therapy Foundation as the Humanitarian of the Year. She is also the author of A Modern Day Guide to Massage for Children and, as a side note, someone I'm proud to call a friend. Tina, thank you so much for being here, uh, doing this interview with me, and for being part of the conference in San Diego. Absolutely, and I have to say, I I second your side note. I'm really um, excited to be speaking with you this morning, so thanks for having me. Well, my pleasure. And today, today, Tina, I'd like to hear your thoughts on a few different things. To start out with, I'd like to know what you most love about the massage therapy profession or industry. Well, everything, I have to say, or I wouldn't be in it, you know. Um, the funny thing is I think that I one of the things as, as we got prepared to speak uh, today, I was thinking about that, and, and one thing that sticks out to me is that it always changes. And I think that that's kind of a cool thing that we have in our profession. It's constantly evolving and changing. Whereas I think I know that I have uh, other friends and colleagues that are in different professions, and their profession doesn't seem to change as much. And, and a lot of people, you know, sit nine to five in a cubicle and kind of keep looking at a computer, and it doesn't, it's not so exciting every single day. And for me, it's really exciting because it changes the literature changes that we're seeing, especially with the massage profession and working with different clients and patients. It's, it's kind of a new, exciting day every single day, which is something that I love. I'm totally with you on that. I don't know how people can do that same old day in, day out time. Uh, to me, it's almost like serving a sentence, <laughs> sitting in a cubicle. <laughs> it really would yeah, be. I would be absolutely. so bored. You bet. And, and I, I, you know, I'm sure it works for some people. I, you know, I don't want to paint it in totally in that, with a negative stroke. But you're right. For me, it, it just doesn't work. And so that's something that I'm, you know, I'm really glad that I figured out early on what I what I wanted to be doing. So that's the positive part. Well, I'm totally, uh, I'm with you on that. I feel exactly the same way on a personal note uh, or personal level. And uh, thank goodness you found your way into it with the incredible impact uh, and reach that you have created. It's we're we're very fortunate to have you in this profession. If I don't, if you don't mind me saying so. Oh my gosh! Here we go. You see, this is how this interview is going to go. <laughs> You're going to say really lovely things. We're going to keep going back and forth, saying great things about each other because we're lucky to have you too, Felicia. So um, now that's that's one of the you know the other parts of this profession that is great. There's so many fabulous people that are involved. It's just a it's a really cool thing. Definitely. Uh, uh, what, what else would you have, you know, in a profession full of artists and healers? But we're, we are very lucky. But with that being said, Tina, you know, we're not perfect. So I'm wondering if there's anything that you would change. In fact, is there one thing, you, if you could change anything about the profession or industry, I wonder what it would be. Yeah, that's a great question because as much as, as we we look at all the positive uh, parts of the profession, one of the things I think that uh, that sticks out to me that I would change is, is looking more at this idea of practitioners not isolating themselves and just working all alone, but looking at working together. And, you know, that's something that our profession we have great opportunity for is working together with other healthcare providers and creating more of a multidisciplinary approach. And I think that that's a common mistake that a lot of professionals and practitioners make in this area is they, you know, they get their practice going really well and just isolate themselves to that and then don't necessarily open themselves up to the opportunity of collaborating with others. So I think that that would be something I would kind of want to chance to others is to get out there and reinvent yourself and work with other people as well and not isolate yourself to just your sole practice. Well, and to your point, I'll tell you that in my solo practice, you know, I owned a spa for many years, and when I sold that, I went back into solo practice and was kind of happy being my own little hermit massage therapist by myself, no responsibilities, no employees, 
didn't even really put myself in a place where new clients could find me because I was happy with the people I had and I really didn't want to expand my business at all. And then a few years ago I decided, okay, well, it's time to, to bring in new clients again. I'm ready to uh, to grow my business, that part of my business again a little bit. And And that was going really well. But what I have personally found very exciting and surprisingly so is exactly what you're talking about, that opportunity to collaborate with other people and just how – um, rich it has made my business. And just in, in the last six months or eight months or so, I've added a, a yoga instructor that you know now teaches yoga classes in my office. And the wonderful array of new clients that have come in the door, and some who've tried out my services, but some who've just taken advantage of some of the retail products that we have, you know, it's been really wonderful. And the energy that they bring into the business, even if they're not coming to me for a massage, it's just really lovely and wonderful. There's some really dear people. And then uh, just in the last couple of months, I've added an esthetician and I also have a couple of part-time massage therapists. And so with each of those people all coming with, in with the idea of how can we help one another, how can we grow together, you know, we're, we're not looking at each other as competition, but rather seeing that synergy, um, it's really changed the way this business feels. I mean, it has a completely different um, a completely different dynamic, and it's one that I've really enjoyed. So I, I, I got to second that emotion. It's, it's been a wonderful thing to work with those folks, and, and I see it continuing to grow. Oh, absolutely, and that's and that's the that is one of the really cool things. I think that you know there are like you were saying yourself, kind of looking at, uh, way back when when you're just really happy with your practice, but you're just by yourself isolated. It doesn't create that community of healthcare providers working together, and it it is exciting just to learn from other providers on their approaches and what are they doing and how are they best serving their clients and patients. And it's it's something that you don't you're not able to expose yourself to if you're just isolating by yourself. Well, and I think too sometimes people feel the need that they have to be a one stop shop. That they think, well, if I can't provide everything that my client possibly needs, then they might leave me. And so instead of really specializing or focusing on something that they're truly passionate about and talented in, they spread themselves kind of thin over too many different kinds of techniques or modalities. And you don't have to do that if you work with like-minded people that you get along with and you have a, a collective higher vision, then you can actually attract more people of, for those things that you are excited and passionate about and let other people handle those you know, maybe side items that they are passionate about and you just had some knowledge on or had some training in, but it's truly their specialty. Absolutely. That, yeah, that makes complete sense to me. I totally agree. So, Tina, one other big question that I want to ask you is about community. As you know, um, community is a huge focus at the One Concept Conferences, especially with the recent addition of the community room at their events. So I'm wondering how you see different healing professions working together or collaborating as a community in the future. Oh, well, that, this, is, this is great because this is one of the reasons I have to tell you that I just love the One Concept Group and their model because from the very beginning when I was contacted by them, you know, years ago as they were looking at expanding and, and bringing their conferences and their ideas, you know, across the nation, that's one of the things they've always spoken about is how do we – look at this as a community approach. And I, I have the same philosophy. I work uh, really specifically in pediatrics, as you know, and that even in that, in just myself with doing with my practice, with working with each individual uh, pediatric client or patient, I don't look at only what I can bring to the table, but rather consult with the entire team of people that are around the child, whether it's their parents, the nurses, the physicians, maybe an occupational therapist, whoever they're working with, and we talk about what are the, some of the things that they're looking at and what are they trying to do for this child? What, what would be the best care approach for each of them? And how do we then achieve that as a collective uh, health care group? Because that, that's the piece that I've found, especially with pediatrics, is this multidisciplinary approach can better serve our, our patients and our clients. And so from the very beginning when uh, one concept, you know, said that this is something that we're really passionate about, that we want to look at this as a community, immediately I jumped on board because I totally agree with that philosophy. This is the way of the future, that healthcare providers will work together to provide a comprehensive multidisciplinary approach for all of our patients and clients. It, it, seeks, it goes back to what you were saying a little bit earlier in that we don't, each one of us individually, have to 
fill the need for in every single aspect for our patients and clients, but rather how do we work with others to make sure that the patient is receiving best care. And, and this is the model for that, is for all of us to get together, have these conversations, get together in the same room and learn from each other and, and share it. I mean, one of the things that I'll mention is even, you know that I take uh, volunteer groups, for example, to work in orphanages in other parts of the world, and I always put together a multidisciplinary team. Even though the focus of our journey is really to use nurturing touch, pediatric massage, and empower not only the caregivers to provide it, but the uh, children to receive it, when we have a team there, we look at the strengths that each person brings to the table and put egos aside. When a child needs something, if we're not the best provider in that moment, if there's another provider that has a different background, a, a different uh, modality that they practice, we call upon that person to bring their, their techniques and tools to the table and just best serve the client. They, I really truly think this, that is the way of the future, uh, that this is what people are looking for, is where can I learn and where can I share so I can be a better provider within a team. I really like what you said about, you know, I know you work with children, so you're specifically involving the parents, but including the, the person uh, that's being cared for on that team. And, you know, in doing these interviews, I, I get a chance to talk to a lot of experts in the wellness industry, and one uh, thing that came up from Dr. Fabrizio Mancini was about empowering people to and get them involved in their care. With a child, that may be more challenging, particularly some of the special populations um, that you work with, um, if they're not quite of the age where they have the comprehension or, or maybe they have some... Uh, cognitive issues where they're not quite able to grasp the concept, certainly not all children, but um, I think engaging the individual and and the other people that, that are in that family or in that unit as a part of the team as opposed to just thinking, oh, well, that's just some person, you know, it's, it's that there's no input or value that they have. I think that's huge. It is huge. And, it, and one of the great things that I've, I've been lucky in in trying to incorporate with all of my practice and when I share the techniques and everything with the practitioners is really to look at infants, children that are not verbal, children with developmental delays, how can we involve them in their care? Because there, there's always some way to do it. I mean, all of pediatric massage is provided with permission. And so we are always looking at that is an idea, well, this child really, even though they're a child and developmentally they may not be in the same position as an adult client or patient, they can actively take a, a part in their care. And so they have choices and they give permission and we really work with them to help them feel empowered in that way, which in the future, I really truly think, you know, we're creating these little people, these pediatric clients that have a better understanding of their body and what feels good to them and how they want to feel. So even in the future, they will likely seek out more um, different types of uh, healthcare approaches and modalities such as massage therapy and different practices in that arena, chiropractic, acupuncture. They'll be more open to it because they'll have had the exposure from really early on. Well, and thank you for pointing out that make, just being making a choice and giving permission is a part of empowerment and being involved in the care. And I'm sorry if I came across in, incorrectly in that um, because I, I... Oh, no, 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 yeah. no, absolutely not. And, it, and it's just, you know, that's, that's the real, that's one of the parts that's so exciting for me when I, when I practice in this work and I share with others when I'm teaching nurses and doctors and massage therapists how to use it. I, th I think that's one of those light bulb moments that goes off for many people when I say, okay, so when we're working with the family today, we are going to teach them how to ask their, their little infant who is three weeks of age, we're there going to ask them permission before they give them massage. And you see, they look at me like I'm crazy. I'm going to be really honest and tell you that. They, they think <laughs> I'm crazy because they say, you know, the baby's not going to say yes or no, or they won't know about positioning, and they won't know whether they want their clothes on or off if we're thinking of draping. I mean, how would they know that? But they, they do. And so it's almost like learning, in a way, a whole different nonverbal language, mm -hmm. which is great because that's touch fits in there perfectly. It's the very first, you know, form of communication. And so to use that from the very beginning as part of communicating um, with the child is it's easier in a way than many think. But it is. It's, it's, it's completely different than working with a, a typically developing adult because they lie down on your massage table and say, yes, I, you know, I registered for this appointment. I'd like to have a massage. It's a completely different practice. 
Definitely. And, you know, before we wrap up, Tina, I know that you're doing, uh, planning to do something kind of different in San Diego with the community room, um, with the public. Would you care to just talk about that for a minute? Oh, absolutely. So one of the things that I'm, I'm doing, and there's so many great things that are going on, not only at the entire conference, but in the community room. So I really strongly encourage, you know, everyone to go online and check out all the different things that are available. I know that there's lots of options to work with many different experts in the field of, of massage and chiropractic and the spa industry to try out different, uh, practices and, and receive care, which is, which is a cool thing at, at a massage conference and, and, uh, healthcare conference to receive care while you're there. One of the things that I'm doing that's a little bit different is on Sunday from 11 to noon, I'm actually offering a class for families. So we're inviting families in, um, of course, within our our community, but also in the greater community at large, to come in and to learn to provide hands-on massage for their little ones. And um, it's going to be a big class with lots of families from babies about three weeks of age to about three years old. So we'll have lots of different developmental stages, and they'll be going home with techniques that they'll learn right there so they can use them that evening or any time in the future. So it's something that, that will impact them for their child's lifetime. Without a doubt. Um, as we close, Tina, um, is there, I'd like to know if there's any um, additional advice you would give massage therapists who are just starting out. Maybe they're interested in pediatric massage, or maybe they're just looking for advice from someone who's uh, been successful as you have? Well, one of the things that for me is is in massage, I, I hear from many therapists that they burn out, didn't quite find their love, their passion, their niche, and they weren't quite sure, you know, how to, to grow a practice. So the first thing is if anyone who's, you know, listening today is newer to the to the industry, I would strongly recommend that you try to come out to conferences like this because you'll meet so many people. You'll meet people that you've read about or that were mentioned in your massage therapy school, and it's helpful because you can get firsthand advice and ask questions. I, of course, would love to see so many practitioners go into the field of pediatrics. I think that that's still, you know, it's quite an underserved population. So I would love to see that. But really what I would like to do is inspire therapists to look into all the different things that are available. The field of massage is growing and the options are they're enormous. And so to be able to just look at different things that you can add to your practice so that you are constantly uh, reinvigorated, passionate about what you're doing, your clients will feel it. And you'll be excited to get up every single day and want to do the work that you love. So constantly learning and growing, I think it's the, the first part of it. Well, we know that you have tapped into your passion. Uh, every time I talk to you, I get goosebumps from something or another you share because it just that passion surges through, and we're so lucky that you're going to be once again a part of the American Massage Chiropractic Acupuncture and Spa Conference, this time in San Diego. Um, for people that want to reach out to you before the conference, Tina, or just learn more about what you do, can you share your best contact or information, uh, website information with everyone? Absolutely. So the best website for us is littlekids.com, and it has that funny phonetic spelling, so I'll spell it for you. It's L-I-D-D-L-E-K-I-D-Z dot com. And we have a contact page there. Of course, we're on Facebook and Twitter and all that lovely stuff, too. Feel free to connect with us anyway because, we're at, you know, at Little Kids, we're all about community. So uh, feel free to connect with us at any time. We would love it. Fantastic, Tina. Thank you again so much for taking time to be a part of the interview today and the conference in San Diego. Can't wait to see you. Can't wait to see you either. I'm really looking forward to it. And for everyone listening, if you'd like to learn more from Tina Allen, please join us for the One Concept American Massage, Chiropractic, Acupuncture, and Spa Conference in San Diego, California, September 13th through 15th. Just go to oneconcept.com. That's the word one, O-N-E, concept.com for more information and to register. Hope to see you there. We'll